Kim's Running History Part 3. So after a semi-successful high school career, at least long distance wise, it was successful. I ran a 251.45 marathon at age 16 and then followed that up one year later with a 239.01 marathon. This is in high school. And about a month later, I ran the White Rock Marathon 245 on a really cold, windy day. So three pretty solid marathons as a high schooler, decent cross-country career, on to college, small scholarship, academically and athletically to Angelo State University. We had an incredible cross-country team. I remember Desmond O'Connor, the incredible Irish runner who has uh, actually run a 213 marathon after college and several other good college runners for small college. We were NAIA. We went to the national meet in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Man, I finished like 116th in a field of 270 or so. Incredibly uh, talented field, but I was okay. I was a freshman and then had a knee injury that required surgery in March of, of uh, 1977. Curtailed my track season. Uh, trained really hard the next summer once my knee recovered and came back and had a really strong cross-country season as a sophomore. We had graduated many of our best runners, so I was the only one that actually qualified for the national meet. And then, despite being promised that regardless of the team's performance, if I qualified for nationals and I finished third in the regional meet, qualifying for nationals in Kenosha again, my coach promised me that I would be allowed to run the national meet. Well, the week before the meet, he called me into his office and informed me that, in fact, he had changed his mind. I would not be running nationals. I was crushed, needless to say, after training so hard, coming back from a knee surgery and uh, proving that I could qualify and do well in the national meet. He actually pulled the plug and didn't allow me to go. So I vowed then and there that I was going to train really hard run the national NAIA marathon championships. They actually had a marathon in their national meet. And then I was going to transfer. I was very disappointed in my coach, and he and I didn't see eye to eye on that particular issue. Well, in May of, uh, actually early June, late May, early June of 1978, I ran the NAIA championships national marathon, finished sixth, earned the last All-American spot, and then the next week actually told my coach that in fact I was transferring to the University of Houston. He was upset. I uh, was um, you know, firm in my, uh, in my decision since he had disappointed me so much with the cross country situation. Went on to the University of Houston and had to redshirt a year. That's the way it works. You switch schools, you have to sit out for a year. And I actually concentrated on my marathoning and Despite uh, despite uh, several attempts, ran 2.30 and a few seconds, in fact, six times before I finally broke that particular barrier later on. So college was mostly training for marathons. Uh, I ran cross-country at the University of Houston, but I didn't run many track meets. I wasn't a good 5,000-meter runner. Ran a few 10,000s on the track, but focused more on the roads. And that pretty much was my college career. My next part, I will focus on uh, more of the marathon aspect and getting down below that 230 barrier finally and my experiences at the Boston Marathon. So, more next time.